Welcome back to the Friday Club Break Time with interview series. I'm so excited today because we're talking all about mystery shopping and I've got Alicia Code of Independent School Portal here with us and thanks for joining me Alicia. Oh it's nice to be here Sophie. Just before we start then and this is a topic that I've been really looking forward to discussing on the Friday Club. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role and how you work with Independent Schools Portal? Yes, yeah, so the Independent Schools Portal was set up um, originally for heads and deputies in mm-hmm. the prep sector. And the idea was to bring CPD um, at an affordable price and sort of work collaboratively. Over time, we've grown and we've now started holding um, a couple of events for marketing and admissions mm-hmm. professionals. But we're all about um, collaborating with our colleagues. And one of the things that we started to do was mystery shopping. Um, and I've done quite a lot of it. And I've also commissioned other people to do it. And I, I, I'm now hanging up my mystery shopping boots, which is why I can mm-hmm. do the video today, Sophie. Um, okay. But in that you, no one will see me in their school, but it might be me who sent somebody. Um, but I just think it's such a interesting topic because it's the one area that as a school, it's very hard for you to evaluate. You know, you can evaluate your catering because you eat the food. You can yeah. evaluate your teaching through feedback, through lesson observations. But the tour process is something very, very difficult for you as a head or a registrar to get that feedback because if people don't join your school and um, it's unlikely that they're going to say oh well actually this wasn't great that wasn't great so um I think it's a re- to me every school should be doing it every year um because there's always some way that you can improve and that external pair of eyes can really help absolutely I think we get so engrossed in what we're doing every day inside of a school that actually having that third pair of eyes on what we're doing and open to giving us some feedback is really important um I'll admit Alicia I'd never heard of mystery shopping for anything other than retail which might be what anybody outside of the school's marketing community is used to would you mind telling us what kind of things you're looking for in a mystery shop and what that process looks like for schools Yeah, sure. I mean, we work very closely with the schools and we will um, make sure that we're looking at the things that they want us to look at. So quite often, the reason people commission a mystery shop is because they know that they want things changed in their school and they want that external evidence. Because if you've got a report saying, goodness me, the waiting room was disgusting and crowded or cold or the paper, that has far more weight than somebody sat there going, I think we need to improve the waiting room and um, so what we do is we work with the school to work out what the parent profile looks like and um, so you know it may be that actually we want to say it's an academic ch- very academic child or it might be a sporty child because what we want to do is just look at how that process um, flows within a school and the pandemic has given so many opportunities you know products like virtual school experience do parents now need two hours looking around a school and Also, you can often find with a school that things evolve quite slowly. So you're still being shown the drama block because five years ago, that was really new and exciting, where actually it's it's still fine, but it's no longer your wow piece and your members of and the parents you're showing around their child's not interested in drama. So should you be showing them the theatre? So I think there's a real opportunity to make the tour process really personalised and use a mix and match of online and offline so just having somebody come in and look at it can really help you as a team sit down and go right what should we do what what can we do differently and and what works so when you go in or when you did go in as a mystery shopper so anonymous to the admissions team that were you looking for certain things or would you have been asked by say a head to look for certain things on a visit Um, So we have a standard template. So we would comment on things like the state of the grounds when we arrived, how easy um, the communication beforehand, how easy it was to find the school. Had we been told about parking? I mean, that's a that's a classic one that comes up time and time again. Um, Because if you turn up somewhere and there's nowhere to park, you're flustered. Um, Now, now, obviously, you can't invent a car park, but you can say to me, there isn't any parking, please park two streets behind. Or So that we're looking at um, that. We're then looking at the tour process. So are you shown around by a pupil? Are you shown around by a member of staff? How does that 
feel on the tour what do you get to see and what is their general messaging do you have a meeting with the head um is there somebody in charge of the whole process so that you feel once you've left you've got somebody who you can come back to um with questions so yes we're looking at the school we're looking at the facilities but we're looking at really the customer experience um because you know obviously with a school there's always a bit of um subjectivity you might like the head or you might not and we're not there to comment on uh, on that and um, we're there to just sort of look at it all holistically really and what could you be doing better or what could you be doing um differently and i've never ever done a mystery shop that i haven't been impressed with the school but i've also never ever done a mystery shop where there hasn't been some really easy quick wins um in terms of making it a smoother process for for the parents right and what do you think are some of those quick wins generally speaking for for Um, schools so the really easy one is the parking just giving people really clear instructions and i think sophie because we've moved away from sending expensive glossy prospectuses and we've almost i in my opinion maybe gone a bit too much the other way because these are people who are going to spend maybe £30,000 a year with you and they've phoned up and they've booked a tour and all they've had is a two-line uh, letter, email saying, we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. And I think there's a real opportunity there to say things like, oh, here's a link to our swimming pool or is there anyone specific you'd like to see? I think the tour at the moment, schools do it the way they do it, but you know, quick and easy, they could personalise it much, much more. And um, Quite often, we also look at social media. We, it's not a full social media audit, but we look at it in the way that a prospective parent would. You know, you do a bit of research before you got there. And one of the things that we often find is there'll be some old Twitter account that hasn't been used, and that's what's popping up. So that can be really useful as well, because as a, you know, as a busy marketeer, as a head, you don't have time to be constantly checking those um, what's happening with Google and social media. So little things like that. The other thing that quite often happens will be the main link won't be to the homepage. It might be to say performing arts and that's just something that's gone wrong in the back end. And, you know, you're not going to constantly check that. So you often find, you always find a quick social media win. um, And then you usually will find little tweaks about the waiting room, about the parking, but loads of different things that have, have, have come out. I mean, I once had a situation where the children were showing me around the school. And I think it's a personal choice whether the children show you or the parents show you, but it was a one form entry prep school. And it took an hour and a half for these children to show me around the school. And that is just too long. Um, But nobody had stopped to think, gosh, what's going on here? So it's just, you're at your busy job, you've got your tour, you've got what you do. When do you actually step, take a step back and go, actually, how can we do it differently? So that's where we sort of hope that the information from the mystery shop and just gives you food for thought and some quick easy wins really definitely and i hear a lot of um i know there's a lot of debate around who should be doing the tour i've heard of some schools sometimes wanting to get their head involved but of course head teacher is usually really busy to you know too busy to be doing 30 60 minute or longer tours some schools opt to have students or sick formers show them around and other people or other schools always do it with admissions. Do you have a view on what mix works best? So that's an interesting question. And this is where I think personalization is key because it comes down to the person. So some families much prefer being shown round by a member of staff because they can ask um, technical questions that the children might not know the answer to. And um, other families would rather be shown round by the children because the children are the product, the children are what you're hoping your child will grow into. So you want to see a lovely, confident, um, eloquent individual. And others, the registrar normally knows the most. So if you've got lots of questions, the registrar can be great. And so I think it's a personal choice, but I do think um, schools should be asking you what you'd like. I mean, when we, when I do Mr. Shopping and my colleagues do it, you get what you get. So I've had some schools where you only see the registrar, others where you see the head and a tour of pupils, others where a member, and this is where they should be saying, what would you like, you know, because it's, it also makes it more flexible for you because one of the problems you can have is if your tour is always registrar, pupil, head, um, which is the sort of traditional route, 
it can be hard to squeeze people in. Well, with so many relocations at the moment, you, I think we need to think a bit more out of the box and think, have, have we got a good, you know, the head of history? Oh, he's really enthusiastic. He's great with parents. Can he do the tour? And yeah. can you maybe have the conversation with the head on a Zoom call if the head's not available? So I think there's, I think it's really exciting time to offer lots of flexibility and really personalise it for their children. And that's what people care about. It's their individual children. So I think um, I haven't got, I wouldn't say carte blanche, it should be one or the other. I think it's about what works best for your school and your parents who are, who are coming to look round. Absolutely. So understanding what they're trying to get out of that visit, really. Yeah, and if they've got specific concerns, you know, perhaps if their child has been um, bullied at another school and they're looking to move, then, you know, they might want to have a conversation about that and they want to have that with an adult. Whereas yeah. if this is a school they've always liked, always thought their children would come here, they probably do want to be toured around by a, a sixth former and it's all very light. So everybody's needs are slightly different. So I think it's about I think it's about being flexible for the for the actual individual family that's coming through the door. Absolutely. And I really like that approach of flexing the fit. Like it's a parent first approach then, isn't it? Family first rather than school first. So finding what fits. What do you think works best after the visit, Alicia? So what should schools do? Yeah. This is a really interesting one, Sophie, because I find that not all schools even follow up with you. Um, Or if they, yeah, I mean, and that's probably because they're too busy. Um, And the follow-up will normally be if you want, if you need anything else, or if you want to sign up. This is this is what you do. Um, now, I think because we're talking about children and we're talking about a, an expensive purchase, I don't think picking up the phone is a bad idea because you're not trying to sell. You're just saying, "Oh, how was your visit?" Um, and another thing that I think is quite interesting is that quite often, um, if you've had a tour where nobody's been in charge. As a parent, you don't know who to ask. So Mm -hmm. to me, whatever you choose, however you choose to do the tour process, the registrar is key because you want to have as a parent a relationship with somebody so that if you suddenly think, oh, do they do after school club? I forgot to ask. You know who to ask. You want, you know, you want a point of contact. So I think um, a lot of schools, they'll keep you on their database and they might invite you to other open days and things. And that is sensible. But I do think, if you've got time picking up the phone and just saying is there anything else you need to know we know it was quite a big tour and um, can we help i don't think people will see that as salesy you know this is about their child and they will just see it as a individual um an individual service i mean certainly my son when he went to sc- the school that he's gone to you know the registrar was like my best friend I, she must have been sick of me but i was asking her everything and she really made me feel like i knew what was going on and that this was the right process and we were doing it the right way. So a really good experience, I think, is really key, especially now when you know parents do have a lot of choice in terms of where they can send their children to school. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's so many good independent schools out there that it's quite marginal as to which one you choose. So if you're thinking, oh, I need to ask about that, or I wasn't sure about that, then if somebody is really being helpful and giving you a call, I think I think it, it can just sway it sometimes because certainly there's so many good schools out there, it, it is difficult to choose. And some of it will come down to um, very, very minor, minor details. Do you ever find, Alicia, that schools mystery shop other schools? And it's not something that I would do because my view is your school can improve. Uh, Well, first of all, I think as a sector, we should all be supportive of each other. Yeah. I I also think it's highly unlikely that the school down the road that you view as a competitor is going to be doing that one amazing thing that you can copy. Um, And I think every school is authentic and has their own stamp, their own feel, their own ethos. So what would you learn from the school down the road and um, so I don't I don't think there's anything to be um to be gained from it because every mystery shop I do I can always think of um help and normally there's improvements well you've just wasted your money in that instance because you can't you can't those improvements are for another school well obviously the other school won't know about them but I don't really think it gives you um much to work on I think you're much better off focusing on your own school and your own 
process and making that as best as it can be. Absolutely. I mean, I know that some people, some people do mystery shop other other schools, but um, I think there's I think there's better things that people can be doing. It sounds like you'd get more benefit from looking at your own process than looking at another school's process. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Brilliant. Brilliant. So it's been really interesting for me because I've I've not really heard much about mystery shopping in school so I'm really really grateful that you've come on today Alicia and I know that you've got a pdf resource that anybody watching this can download as part of the newsletter um what would your top tip that a school marketer could take away and implement today from our chat do you think I think my top tip would be to see see mystery shopping as a really proactive thing to do and um, certainly when you speak to some schools they they're embarrassed that they're doing it they think it's because there's a problem and mm. and people can feel a bit negative about the idea of your school being mystery shopped whereas my view would be you know let people know that the school is going to be mystery shopped because it also sends out a message to common room of this is an important part of our school offering you know we need to recruit pupils we need to recruit the right pupils and the when they come around the school that's an important part of that process so we are evaluating it in the same way we come and have a lesson observation so i think it gives a really good message for embedding a recruitment culture within your school and it is very much a positive thing because there is always room for improvement no matter which school you are and it's very, very rare that we come back with a direct negative. It's normally all things that the school was aware of or they perhaps hadn't thought of. But as soon as you say it, they go, oh, gosh, yeah, great idea. A bit like you say, that external um, pair, pair, pair of eyes. So I would very much say that every school should be getting their school mystery shopped once or, or once a year or maybe every two years because schools evolve and it um, a classic example was a school which had a beautiful geology classroom. It had a head of geology who was just so into their geology. And that was on the tour and rightly so, because it was just rocks everywhere and really exciting. And then he left and he took all the rocks with him. Yeah. But the school, the tour still included a trip to the geology classroom. And it was like, for me, it was like, oh, hang on, that's a bit random. Why have we gone yeah. up two flights of stairs to see a geology class? I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. It was a normal classroom. And then when you unpack it, it's like, ah, right, yeah, that was on our tour route, but that's changed. We need to maybe look at it again. So that's just a, a small example of the kind of thing that when somebody's coming in as an external person, they might pick up on because, as we know, schools are constantly changing. And therefore, what you show people will, you know, should naturally change as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been so insightful speaking to you today. And I'm so grateful that you came on. You've been an absolutely brilliant guest. So massive, massive thank you. Um, I know that our subscribers will get a lot of insight out of this. We will have the downloadable resource that you've created for um, anybody interested in mystery shopping or wanting to find out more. Where can a school contact you, Alicia, if they wanted to find out more about mystery shopping for their institution? Um, if they go onto the independent schools portal, um, all our contact details are on there. And then what we do is, Sophie, our process is we have an initial conversation with you to understand what it is you want to get out of the shop. You know, is it that you want evidence to spend on a capital project? Is it that you want to show that the registrars run off their feet and needs an extra member of staff? Or is it actually we just want a bit of a sense check and a framework so that the SMT can work together and say, right, how can we make this more exciting and um, what can we do or just reassurance that what you're doing is is good so we have that initial conversation um, and then we take it from there to decide what is best for your school because again I've just harped on about personalization so we've got to make sure we're doing the same as well for, for, yeah. for the schools. Hey it sounds like a great process thank you again for being our guest today can't wait for this interview to go out and hope to work with you again in the future Alicia. Oh, thank you for having me, Sophie. It's been great. Thank you.